All right, well, I've learned a couple things. Uh, looking through the documentation, uh, it would seem as though uh, this is a Japanese only radio. The G, the 2000G was only uh, uh, sold in Japan, so that's kind of cool. Um, that might make it a little more difficult to fix if the circuitry is a little bit different, but I do have schematics, so I should be okay. Um, let's see here. Also, when you purchase the radio, even though it says upper sideband CW and lower sideband, lower sideband wasn't actually an option that you had to buy. And it goes right there. There's a, a, a separate crystal for the lower sideband frequency. Not that I ever want lower sideband, but that's why it doesn't work. So I'm, I'm happy about that, actually, because it's something that doesn't work, but it's supposed to not work. So that's good. Um, I don't know what all those extra things there are, why, why they're not loaded. I, I, I really don't know what that is yet. I, I don't think it's part of this lower sideband thing. I think it's actually something different, but I, I just don't know. Okay, uh, let's see here. What else did I learn? Um, <clears throat> what else did I learn? Uh, there's a connector that's not populated, and I, that had me worried. Right down there, there's a connector with nothing attached to it. And as it turns out, that's the memory backup. There should be a NICAD battery that connects there and keeps the thing uh, remembering what you programmed it into. So it's not necessary to use the radio. Um, I might put one in. It's supposed to go in a bracket that goes right on those three screws right there. The battery is supposed to go onto a bracket and it's the screws are missing and the bracket is missing. So uh, I doubt that I'll put one in. Uh, I don't think it's necessary. Uh, let's see, what else did I learn? Um, I ordered on, on eBay, I think I purchased from this guy before, he sells capacitor kits for radios where he just gives you all of the capacitors, you don't have to go sort them out and everything. So I ordered a set of capacitors for this radio and I'll do a complete recap of it. Why not? It seems to be really easy to work on. So that'll be good. Um, and maybe I don't need to do anything. Maybe it'll work after I recap it. So that'll be, that'll be very good. Um, there's a lot of crystals in this radio. I was actually quite surprised how many crystals there are, but that's okay. Um, <clears throat> all right, let's take a look at the um, block diagram. This is the block diagram, and it's going to be hard to photograph this, but I'll give it a try. All right, so um, the way that radios work is there's usually a uh, carrier that gets modulated, and then uh, it gets upconverted and stuff like that. So uh, there's a table here of how this radio works. Um, so there's an upper sideband carrier, a CW carrier, and a lower sideband carrier that's uh, the crystal that's not loaded, the crystal that's not loaded is a 10.6965, very difficult to find. The FM is a, is a, a carrier of 10.695, okay? That gets mixed with a phase lock loop, which then takes it up to uh, 144 to 146, and these are the interim frequencies, one, 133 to 135 range. Okay, so I figured that out. Uh, all right, so let's take a look at how the FM works. Microphone, microphone amplifier, <clears throat> comes in a low-pass filter. Then uh, there's an FM modulation uh, that operates with this crystal. So the um, audio information wiggles the crystal back and forth, and then you get a FM modulation. And this crystal is at uh, 10.695, so that's the FM frequency. Goes into a buffer, uh, goes into a mixer. <clears throat> this mixer mixes the 10.695 uh, with the face lock loop. So this is the thing you set on the front panel, it creates a face lock loop. 
and then they get mixed together and now you're at 144 megahertz that goes through a mixer that goes through the filter uh, goes into a drive <clears throat> this has alc on it oops this has alc on it um, this is the high power low power that's not functional in my radio right now so it sets some type it sets the alc to instead of going full swing it only goes partial swing so we'll take a look at why that's not working then it goes into a final amplifier and out so this all seems to be fine because fm i can i can do fm so fm goes all the way through i'm getting like 12 watts out so that looks that looks great okay but what if you want to transmit sideband okay so a single sideband is going to go through the microphone instead of going this way it comes down here it gets it gets uh amplified through here uh looks like there's a double balance mixer with diodes here it gets mixed in with a carrier that carrier is generated by this carrier board here upper sideband or lower sideband frequencies so that gets mixed in it gets buffered it goes into a filter to clean it up then it comes up this way it gets buffered again and then it comes up this way so now instead of the path being this way the path is now this way but then the rest of it's all the same on the output the alc loop and the uh, final amplifier so the uh, power comes in power comes in from here <clears throat> all right and then the receive circuit's much more complicated um so I won't go through that today, but I got some idea about the radio, the receive circuit. There's a whole bunch of extra filtering, a bunch of stuff down here. And yeah, a bunch of stuff for the, uh, for the, for the sideband, uh, demodulation. Okay. So I at least have a cursory idea of how the radio works and, and what to look for. Um, I do want to be able to test the radio and stuff, um, effectively, uh, efficiently I should say and I have this adapter here to uh, PL259 to, uh, to BNC and it doesn't actually mate right um, let me show you that a little bit closer all right you can see that this connector is actually quite short and this is very very deep and when you put this on it bottoms out and it won't let it seat correctly um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to the lathe and I'm going to remove this section here. I'm just going to, from the neural out, I'm going to just remove that. And uh, you can see the threads don't even start way down here, so it won't affect anything. So I'll do that and then I'll have an adapter that actually fits this thing. Right now, if you, uh, if you screw it on, then, can you hear that? It's still a bit loose. And so, yeah, let me go do that now. All right, that came out looking very nice and it now fits on the radio and is nice and tight. So uh, yeah, I need to wait for my capacitors.